Jan Willem, you've been in Israel for over 40 years. How did your love affair with the Jewish people in Israel begin? First of all, it's nice to be on your program. Thank you. And as I've already done, I bless you. Thank and you. I hope that the people will support uh, what you're doing Thank and your ministry, because I believe the voice for Israel is one of the most important voices to save uh, our nations. And uh, I was influenced, among others, by Corrie ten Boom, who lived in Harlem, where I grew up. Uh, the Americans know her from the Hiding Place film that Billy Graham made. And of course, the Bible is extremely clean, uh, clear yes. um, about the importance that um, Israel has, especially in the end time. I think, for instance, of Jeremiah 30, verse 10 and 11. When I bring Jacob back, though I make a full end with all the nations where I scattered her, I will not make a full end of Israel. And you see the collapse of nations, Europe, where I come from, uh, economically and uh, infiltrated by the powers of Islam, decadent. Um, it's not anymore a Christian Europe, it's a hedonistic Europe. And America will go that same way if this message that you represent and a few others, uh, I wish I could say many others, um, will not be heard. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 12, the nation that shall not serve Israel shall perish. And Mordecai said to Esther, if you keep quiet, now I speak to every Christian, whether they are Jewish believers or Gentile believers in America. If you keep silent now, God's plan with Israel will go on. But you and your house and your family and your church will uh, face or have to face the consequences. And I feel it so strong, Miles, that I said, Lord, let a pro-Israel president, that administration, take over the White House so that you can still give a respite, as Billy Graham has called for uh, at the occasion of his 94th uh, uh, anniversary. Uh, give a respite, Lord, give a respite. You have used America to free Europe. You have used America for 80% of all evangelism. Uh, uh, Lauren Cunningham is an American. George is of Operation Mobilization is an American. Yes. Uh, Billy Graham is an American. Uh, I thank God as a European. I'm not critical of America, but I, I'm wounded in, in my heart to see how America is throwing away what made her big. When America stood besides Israel, God used America. Yes. And I, I've studied theology in um, England. And I told the English, because the British have not understood why they lost their crown. I said, when you opened up Palestine, as it was called then, yes. for the Jews to immigrate, yes. and the Christian Zionist and Christian believers' influence on Lord Balfour, he had an aunt who was a firm believer in the return of the Jews, like the Corrie ten Boom family. Yes. When you did this, you evangelized the world. C.T. Studd was an Englishman. William Carey in India was an Englishman. Uh, Hudson Taylor, that great man of God that opened up China, was an Englishman. When they turned against Israel to yes. favor and curry favor with the Arabs, like America is doing now. Yes. They lost their crown yes. and America took it over the last 50 years. Yes. I, I burn in my heart. Yes. I said, Christians, you should be on your faces yes. before God. Yes. You should be on your faces yes. because you, the time is ticking away. And a, a prophet in India said, I saw America had already dropped the crown like England when they turned against Israel after being so blessed by God. Yes. And I said, Lord, turn it back Please. and use miles <laughs> as well. Well, there were, there were, thank God there were a few of us that stand Amen. with you. We're so honored to have you here and to hear the passion in your heart. This is the message we want to get out to America. So we're grateful that you're here. And I think your organization, the ICZC, is doing that. Tell us a little bit about that as well, how you're working organizationally in this time. Uh, I, I was the main principal founder of the Christian Embassy. Yes. And we did that in 1980 because um, Jerusalem was on the chopping block. And I, uh, Teddy Kollek remained a friend, the, the mayor of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. 
uh, ever since. And when I had my marriage in the garden tomb where I preached seven years, he came to my marriage and we did it under the kupa. And my, um, my, my daughter-in-law said, uh, Jan Wilhelm van der Hoeven makes a whole mikmas. You don't know if it's Jewish or Christian, but, but we follow after all it's an Orthodox rabbi yes. who has no equal, no equal in Israel. There is such a beauty in his character. I'm so proud of him. I don't just believe in him. I'm so proud of my Lord. And I can understand that he says, don't call anyone your rabbi. Once you have met the rabbi, I don't understand people. Oh, I'm going to look this. I, I says, I have the best rabbi that teaches me that. Uh, uh, even messianic rabbis, if they're completely true with the Bible, they should not call themselves messianic rabbis. They're just brothers as we are. So uh, I'm proud of this Lord that is bringing the Jews back. Why? Because he wants to come back to this earth and save this earth from all its wars and unrighteousness from Jerusalem, not from the White House in Washington, D.C., but from Jerusalem and using his own Israel people. And where does that stand in the Bible? When the Lord builds again Zion, he will appear in his glory. I'm laughing because years ago, Moish Rosen said to me, Miles, don't let them call you rabbi. So I'm, I'm, re I'm happy resonating to hear that. with yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. So we, we're seeing a real confluence between replacement theology and the rise of Islam. Can you explain to our viewers how those... Yeah, just a second. Let's start with that question good. again. Okay. Let's start with the question again. We're, we're, we're seeing a real confluence between the European style of replacement theology and the rise of Islam. Can you explain to our viewers how those relate and what they are trying to accomplish in the world today? You, you, you would be amazed at my answer. Um, there is a kind, if we are completely honest with the Bible, there is a kind of a replacement. Because the Bible says that on the tree of Israel there were branches that did not believe when he appeared. That's why Jesus wept. He says, if you had only known the day of your visitation, now you will see wars. And this city of Jerusalem has seen only wars since he was here. And so the Bible says that these unbelieving Jews were broken off. And instead of them, Gentiles were not put on a new tree called the church or the body of Christ. So that most 80%, even of the people who now listen to me, I believe, believe in two trees, the church, brother and Israel. Israel will have a future, praise the Lord, but we will be raptured. And so the two never meet. That's not biblical. The Bible speaks only of one tree, of one stick, of one flock. And we are put into the tree of Israel by the grace of God because we accepted the Messiah. And when the full number of Jews in some way replacing these fallen off branches have been put in and this is what the people miss today wow. the presbyterians and the lutherans and many other christians even from the evangelical camp when the full number have been grafted in and become israelites of god mm -hmm. part of israel as paul says you gentiles who were outside the commonwealth of israel he has made you nigh by the blood of that wonderful lord so when the full number and it's happening now. The last nations and tribes on earth are being uh, 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 preached the gospel. Yes. Then God will return to the fallen off branches mm -hmm. that he has gathered as dry bones mm -hmm. in Israel yes. and move upon them by yes. the Holy Spirit, not on 120 <laughs> as on the day of Pentecost. That was a foreshadowing yes. on, from then to Beersheba. Now, I, I want to tell this because there's so much misunderstanding. Yes. After the physical restoration of Israel, yes. bone to bone and flesh and sinews, right. the church has taught, mm -hmm. then brother, this will be the great tribulation. We will be raptured, but the poor Israel will two thirds will be killed. That's not what the Bible tells. After the physical restoration, the first thing that comes, Son of man, prophesy to the wind. The wind that has brought the full number of Gentiles. Revivals in Toronto and in, 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 on the Zulus in, 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 in South Africa. Yes. That wind of the Spirit is yes. being asked to come back. This time not to a little room, 
but to all of Israel and all of Israel will be saved. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say, <laughs> if the rejection of Israel mm -hmm. with only 120 Jews receiving the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. has brought burst the age of the Gentile believers, yes. what will this birth? Life it will birth life from the death from this planet Earth. So how can you not be pro-Israel? Hallelujah. <laughs> That's so wonderful, wonderful to hear. And I think you've tried to capture the heartbeat of this in your new movie. Can you tell our viewers about that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's made by an Israeli believer. Uh, I call him the little Mozart of Israel because he's an unbelievable musician. And his, his, somebody saw his music. It, it was original music for the film, but he says this is Hollywood quality. Uh, he helped also uh, the TBN uh, a, 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 a day with the, the king of about Esther, uh -huh. and uh, and it, it shot for forth after he made his music uh, part of that uh, a promo, yes. and so I was lucky is maybe not a Christian word, but I was blessed <laughs> uh, to have him, yes. and it was so amazing because he put Bibi on it, and um, uh, we had. Uh, we have a very good contact. We had Sarah uh, Netanyahu in our home, and she saw the the the, the, the film. Yes. The wife of uh, took it, uh, uh, took two copies with her. So I um, I know I was in Hong Kong, and the Chinese saw. The Chinese are not only so believing, but they are so humble. Yes, they are not opinionated. Mm. I love the Chinese, mm. and I heard them sniff. <laughs> I was in Holland. I showed it to younger people, mm -hmm. among which were students. Mm -hmm. And a young man came after seeing this film, and I hope you can show it. And he stood in front of me, in front of the whole congregation. And he said, I want to confess my sin to you. I did not know that it was so important to God, Israel. I saw it now. I asked you representing Israel to forgive me, that I was callous about God's love for Israel, forgive me. And people began to pray, and it was a girl who wanted to weep. i much rather that have that than people saying, brother, uh, can I tell you that the, 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 the first there will be the rapture, and then Israel will come back to their home, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, it's all so knowledge about the, God says, when I planned you, and this is going to be the theme of our next feast, mm -hmm. when I bring you back, Jacob, mm -hmm. I will plant you yes. in my land yes. with my whole heart yes. and with my whole soul. Yes. God, you hear me? I said, the Creator <laughs> who threw millions of stars and planets and has a little planet called the Earth with fantastic countries, Norway, New Zealand and beautiful nature. He is so intent to bring his people to his land that not just as a part of, it's now the time, but <laughs> with his whole heart, the Creator is speaking. So I will say to the Christians, you say that that Creator is your Father through Jesus Christ. So where is your passion? Where is your all your soul? And we're not even speaking about something spiritual. We are speaking about God planting the Jewish people in their land. Why is that so important? Because, and I've said it all over the world, the Jews have to be back in their land yes. before God yes. visits this earth. Yes. When they came from Babylon, Jesus was born yes. in Bethlehem. If they had stayed in Bethlehem, Jesus would not have come to this earth. So the return of the Jews to their land was always a necessity for the Lord to visit this planet. They are coming back. Jesus is not coming back to a mosque. He's coming back to a temple that's not. And so the code word of the devil is mm. Palestinian state, mm. Palestinian state, the dividing of the land. Yes. And the Lord says, I will bring all the nations mm. to the valley of Joseph at full. They divided my land. And the Christians are silent. Right. I said, if somebody comes to rape your wife through mm. the front door, you're not going to be pious looking through the mm. windows. I'm praying for the peace of mm. my home. Uh, as Christians pray for the peace of Jerusalem, mm. you're going to face that intruder mm -hmm. where he comes in. Mm -hmm. And even Rabin said, mm -hmm. 
a Palestinian state on the West Bank will be the end of Israel. So we are the only ones as an ICC who have our office near Bethel, where God started his love story. I live in the West Bank, even if my government will not give me a pension because I live in occupied territory. I says, Lord, if the devil wants to come in and sneer the Christians who are looking for their easy rapture and take the West Bank with East Jerusalem becoming a Muslim state, a Muslim capital of the Palestinian Muslim state, preventing the Lord to come back because he's not coming back to a mosque, he's coming to a temple. And when people say, yeah, but brother, that's the temple of Antichrist. I said, no, you read Ezekiel eight chapters. It's a majestic temple. And in my Bible, it mm. says in Ezekiel 43, he will come through the East Gate, not at the Golden Gate, East Gate of a rebuilt temple that the devil is dead afraid will come here. And that's why the nations imagine a faint thing. There will be peace in the Middle East when there will be a dividing. And the devil doesn't say, and Jerusalem will stay under my Muslim clause. Right. Right. And the Christians are all waiting for their rapture. Oh my gosh. And the devil says, you don't understand. This Jesus, that's why I don't want this land to be kept under their feet, mm. will not come to a mosque, but to a temple. And the Bible says, they will come from afar, you will be one of them, that will build or rebuild the temple of the Lord. And let me say for Christians who say, it's the temple of Antichrist. When Jesus came to the temple, beautified by Herod with his fornicating hands, already defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes, yes. who slaughtered the pig in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. He could have said, this is not my father's house. Wow. This is the temple of a pre... Uh, 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 no, of, of, of a, a pre-type of the Antichrist, mm -hmm. Antiochus Epiphanes. I'm not... Not only did Jesus call it his father's house, mm. though Antiochus Epiphanes had defiled it, mm. he called it a house of prayer for all nations. I said, Lord, isn't that wonderful? Now I speak now to everyone that hears this. Yes. Is this not the truth that in our temples we have had other people reign, sin reign, uncleanness reign? And that the Lord doesn't say, because you have had other people in you, I'm not going to make you the holy temple of my residence. Isn't it wonderful that God says, okay, even if the Antichrist, and just, I was watching there before you came, I said, Lord, what do you want me to say? Then you can see how close we are. Arafat was asked to the presidential playbacks to speak. He was a consummate liar, as Sharon said. They believe he was a homosexual, a pervert. He was, he stole the British Central Bank in Beirut clean of 600 million. So what a thief. And what does the Bible say? The man of sin will sit himself up in the temple of God before the Lord comes back. Mm. And he wanted to be buried on the Temple Mount. Mm. How close! And the Christians believe so much in peace. They had him as a speaker for the presidential prayer breakfast. I say, you Christians, with all your knowledge about the Bible, you don't understand how clever the devil is if you stay not close to the Lord and get everything that is still sin or compromising your life, as we all have to do, out of your life so that you can be clean enough to hear God's still small voice saying, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's why we opened up the embassy, to keep Jerusalem under the feet of Israel. And that's why I opened the ICZC in the West Bank, to keep the West Bank from falling into the hands of a Muslim Palestinian state. Amen. In closing, Jan Willem, I want to give you the freedom to say whatever it is you want to say to America, the believers and America at large, take your freedom. Thank you, Miles. I believe in action. I know there's an enormous um, emphasis on prayer, prayer, prayer. But prayer alone is not enough. I wrote an article, the wonderful correlation between priest and prophet. 
There were not just priests in the Old Testament who prayed. A priest speaks about man's affair to God. Yes. But the prophet speaks about God's affair to man. Yes. And I, I know after 40 years, my son and daughter served in the Israeli army. We go the whole way. We go the way of Ruth, who is a symbol of the end time church. Where you go, Israel, I'll go. I will see the Prime Minister uh, this day. Yes. I love this man. I pray for him. He said on my birthday when he came, our best friends in the world are the Christians who believe in Israel's future. They know it in Israel. I know more of the cabinet probably than any other uh, 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 preacher possibly in, in, in Israel. But I believe in action. I do not, I say to Christians, you all like worship? Like David, but David did not stop with worship. Right. He became a warrior for right. Israel. And I know you have that spirit. And if people say, but what shall I do? All I would plead with you is to give them my Israel website, mm -hmm. uh, israelmybeloved.com, yes. yes. because I've been trained after 40 years. I preached seven years at the empty tomb. I never had a rifle, never heard about Muhammad leaving an empty tomb or Buddha leaving an empty tomb. If Christians would go to Muhammad's tomb in Saudi Arabia, says, please give me eternal life. If he had still a mouth to speak, he says, please leave me alone. I couldn't help myself. What can I do for you? Right. But I stood at the empty tomb and I could say, Lord, there's not one scientist, not one religious leader that can give men back what we lost in paradise and that lord is going to be king not in the white house mm -hmm. but in jerusalem yes. and if people say what can i do yes. to build with him his people to protect them yes. to stand that the west bank will not become a palestine state they should write to me because i i'm an expert in this yes. but by god's grace it's not proud um, israelmybeloved.com and one of the things that i know the lord has told me when we burst the embassy, the Christian embassy in 1980, is to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, not to go back to our Jewish roots, but to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to fall upon this nation in a double portion. I know, and I'm going to say it, and there's going to be such miracles. I've seen the Israelis trying to play tennis without legs. My, my daughter helps Israelis that have no more legs to try to sit on a horse. She's an expert instructor. I said, Lord, that's an hour that they have four legs under them, four legs to one Israeli who lost his legs because he saved uh, his own company from a terrorist attack. He, and his wife and his children left him. I said, Lord, he already lost his legs. Now his children. His... I want that man to see the double portion of the Holy Spirit when he comes in. Not, I pray for you uh, and, and shalom, shalom. I want them to see that you are the God that is alive, that can wake up Sharon from his uh, coma after seven years, as you did Nebuchadnezzar, when after seven years his mind returned to him. I want Israel to know that that Lord promised me and you, the day will come that you will do the same works <laughs> and greater. And that's why we have the Feast of Tabernacles, not to go back to our Jewish roots, but to say, Lord, when are you going to fulfill the Feast of Tabernacles? to make it the former and the latter rain falling on Israel and the church together. Wow, what an honor to have you on this program. Thank you so much. Thank you.